My name is Cahal O'Donoghue. I'm head of Chagas Rural Economy and Development Programme and I presented a paper today on some research that's been funded by the EPA um, where we looked at the relationship between water quality and the uh, economic activity that happens upstream in river catchments in agriculture industry and also the impact of, of settlement patterns. Um, our, our research um, essentially followed uh, existing research which highlights a negative relationship between agriculture septic tanks and water quality so that if you have more intensive agriculture or more uh, greater number of septic tanks uh, it's associated with, with poor water quality. I guess what our research has extended is, is to look at the change over time and to look at the, to some extent, the impact of change practices and greater investment in farm uh, waste management, participation in agri-environmental schemes, compliance of nitrates directives and, and so on. And we find a statistically significant improvement in the relationship between agriculture and water quality over that, that, that period of time. We don't see the same impact for, for septic tanks. So essentially what we're seeing is that uh, agriculture has become more environmentally efficient and by that I mean that for a given level of agriculture activity there is better water quality now associated with that activity than, than before and, and, and I think uh, one of the drivers is, uh, has been the, the change the farmers have made in response to policy. Of course the, 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 it takes a long time, um, the, the lag times they call it, to have for changes at farm level to have an impact on the environment and so really what we're seeing between 2000 and 2010 are probably the, the, the initial effects of all that investment that, that occurred over that period. There's a, there's a second way in which um, change, the changes can impact on agriculture, that's a level of, of intensity. And between 1998 and 2010 we saw a decline um, in the, the number of cows or cattle by about a million over that period. And so that relates to the intensity. So there's been a, a decrease in the intensity, so that's the, the number of, of animals, let's say, and there's been an improvement in the efficiency. From the point of view of septic tanks, we see a greater number of septic tanks, so an increase in the intensity at that point, so there's more, there's more impact of septic tanks, but there's, we don't see any change in the efficiency because there haven't been the same programs that we've seen uh, in agriculture in, in other uh, aspects like in, in, in septic tanks. I guess there are a number of dimensions. Um, certainly we'd expect an increase in dairy cow numbers. I mean, we're already seeing that um, and that will happen because of the abolition of, of milk quota. But at the same time you also have a trend where we're, we're seeing a reduction over time in the number of, of beef animals. So you, you may have an increase in one and some um, decrease in the other and we, we do see a reduction in, in, the, in, the, in the cattle herd. Now whether one offsets the other, it's, it's very hard to say. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. But at the same time, we, we're seeing a continued focus on improved environmental efficiency. And so that's the challenge to, uh, and I guess that's the whole goal of the, the food harvest strategy, sustainable uh, green growth, that we have our expansion married with, um, I guess, a better uh, environmental uh, management practices on farms. And so that is a challenge. Um, but, and, and we've seen that the, that the sector has, has responded in terms of investment and we're now starting to see the, the impact of that. And I guess we need a, a continuation of that, I guess good practice, uh, good farming um, to maintain that improvement in environmental efficiency while delivering on improved income for farmers and for the, for the economy. More